Hi, I'm Chris Sangster, and welcome back to the studio. Today, we're going to dive into the exciting new update to Logic Pro version 11.1. After the massive version 11 that was released earlier this year, I honestly was not expecting another meaningful update to Logic this year, but we got exactly that in version 11.1. .1. This is not a simple quality of life update. Although there are plenty of those types of things, version 11.1 .1 added some amazing new features and fixed some huge issues that many of us had with previous versions of Logic Pro. Before we look at the specifics, just a quick reminder, back up your current version of Logic Pro before updating. You should do this before every update. I will link my video that walks you through the entire process in the description below. It's a super simple process, but one that you should not skip. It is the only way to guarantee that you can revert to a stable version of your setup if anything were to break with the new update. Okay, now that the backup police had their say, let's look at the awesome new features of Logic Pro 11.1. .1. To start, I gotta say it, they finally listened to us. I was absolutely shocked when I saw that we finally got Plugin search in Logic Pro, a feature that so many of you have been begging for is finally here. Honestly though, was Apple watching my missing features of Logic Pro videos? I want to believe that our community here played a small part in getting this feature added to Logic Pro. I'm probably reaching, but it is a great thing to see nonetheless. And Sorry to speaker food, the makers of plug search, because Apple definitely copied your homework on this one. To start, just like with most other DAWs, when you click on a slot in a channel strip to add a plugin, boom, there it is, a search bar. Just type in the name of a plugin and select it to add it as normal. You can use the search function on inputs, outputs, and buses. No more searching through that long list of sends in your full mix. An area where I think the search function is gonna be especially handy is in the create a new track window when adding a new software instrument track. We can now use the search function to quickly find the plugin we want to use. Also, I appreciate that this menu has been reorganized in version 11.1. .1. We now have categories for the stock software instrument plugins instead of that long list. It just looks cleaner. We also have a dedicated keyboard shortcut to call up the plugin search feature. It is Control Command P. Just hover your cursor over a plugin slot and hit Control Command P, and then you get this search bar to type in your plugin name. I actually think this is the fastest way to use this new feature. And along with the search feature, we also get a shortcut to remove a plugin. Just hold the Command button on your keyboard, and you'll see that the cursor turns into the eraser tool, and then you can click to remove a plugin. So simple, so necessary. Thank you, Apple, finally. And speaking of simple but necessary, we got another feature that has long been on the wish list of Logic Pro users, myself included. We can now reorder tracks in the mixer window, but there is a little trick to it that you need to be aware of. You can click in any blank area of a channel strip that you want to move, but then you have to wait for just a split second with your mouse click held down. You can actually see that the channel strip gets a little black border around it, almost like a 3D kind of effect, and that means it's ready to be moved to a new position. With your mouse click still held down, you can now drag it to a new place in the mixer. If you simply click and drag your mouse immediately, it selects multiple channel strips like it used to. Once you get the hang of waiting that split second, it's super easy. We can rearrange single tracks, groups of tracks, even non-continuous tracks, and moving the aux track of a track stack moves all of the tracks inside the stack together. And of course, the tracks in the main window will follow along with these order changes. Another update that practically made me do backflips, probably because I literally made a video about it two days before the update came out, is that we can now hear the pre-roll on the track that we're recording on. If you didn't realize it before, in Logic Pro, you would never hear the material that had been previously recorded on the record-enabled track during the pre-roll when using Logic 
logic's count in function. This made it difficult to time your entrance and it just sounded odd for most musicians. Of course, there were workarounds to this weird behavior like using auto punch or just duplicating the track and recording on the new track, but that's all out the window now. We can now hear the pre-roll on the record track like it should be. And honestly, not a lot of fanfare was made about this specific update, but honestly, this might be the best part of the new version of Logic Pro, especially if you record for artists a lot. I was constantly fighting this issue in sessions, and I'm so glad to not have to do it anymore. One thing I did notice though, hearing the pre-roll is not affected by using the input monitor on the track, but if you enable auto input monitoring, and the input monitor button on the track, you no longer are able to hear the pre-roll. I'm not really sure why that is, but that seems to be the only way to not hear the pre-roll anymore, is to have input monitoring and auto input monitoring turned on at the same time. Moving on to the big headlining new feature, the Quantech Room Simulator, a brand new stock reverb plugin that emulates two famous hardware reverbs from Quantech. The Quantech Room Simulator was one of the first digital reverb units, and it's famous for its accurate recreations of real acoustic spaces. The original hardware units are highly sought after today and are quite expensive on the secondhand market. But now we have access to a super accurate digital recreation of these units right inside of Logic Pro. For me, I think this plugin is going to be especially useful for film and TV post-production because those workflows necessitate reverbs that emulate real spaces, but I'm sure there are going to be plenty of great music applications as well. The plugin models two different Quantech units, the original Quantech Room Simulator, and then if you click here in the top, it switches over to an emulation of the Quantech Yardstick. As with all Logic plugins, there are tons of great presets to get you started. And of course we have the standard controls found on most reverb plugins to tweak to our heart's desire. The nomenclature is a bit different on this plugin though, so I think it's worth pointing out some of the main reverb controls here. This big knob on the left labeled reverb time is of course the decay time. This slider here labeled reverb delay is our pre-delay control. The wet dry knob is broken out into two sliders similar to chromoverb and space designer with dry level controlling the amount of dry signal and reverb level controlling the amount of wet signal. I'm personally not a fan of this wet dry setup in general, but it is what it is. Then we have controls that are specific to the hardware that is being emulated. And as you can see, the controls available in the yardstick differ from those available in Room Simulator. I haven't had time to fully dive into the nuances of these features and how best to utilize them, but I definitely plan on deep diving this in the future. Drop a comment below and let me know if you would like to see a full breakdown video on the Quantec Room Simulator. A fun little Easter egg in this plugin for all the nerds like me out there, if you click on the Quantec logo in the top left corner, it opens up this cool article about the founder of Quantec and the history of the company. Absolutely love to see that. Another fan favorite plugin Beat Breaker got a great new feature added in this update, and that is this Bypass Below feature. This allows any information below the frequency we set here to come through unaffected by Beat Breaker. In practice, I think this is most useful on drum loops, where we can have the full range of the kick drum and even the original kick drum pattern to come through unaffected but we can still get all the cool effects on the higher end elements of the drum loop like snares and hi-hats. Check out this before and after example. With Bypass Below engaged, the kick is much fuller because it's not being changed by the pitch shifting portion of this Beat Breaker patch. 
This expands the sonic possibilities of Beatbreaker even further. Those are all of the really big upgrades that I wanted to point out, but there are a ton of smaller quality of life and organizational updates that come with Logic Pro 11.1. Let's quickly look at a few of my favorites. First up, there is now a setting to turn off the view of Mastering Assistant in the Stereo Output Bus. Go to the Logic Pro menu, Settings, and View. Then navigate to the Mixer tab and uncheck this tick box next to Show Mastering Assistant button in Stereo Output. Now in the Stereo Output aux, you do not have that little mastering tag right at the bottom of your plugin list. So you probably know my feelings on Mastering Assistant by now. I will obviously be turning this off. Great addition. One update that I think is gonna help a lot of people that deal with latency issues or are working on an underpowered computer is that the control for the IO buffer size can now be added to the LCD. Right click inside the control bar and go to customize control bar and display. Now you see that the sample rate view in the LCD column also includes the buffer size. With this enabled, you can change the buffer size right from the LCD. Very handy if you are constantly changing buffer sizes to record with less latency. No more navigating to the settings menu every time you want to adjust it. Another excellent quality of life improvement is that plugins with a wet dry control now default to 100% wet when instantiated on an aux track. Definitely how it always should have been, as this is how you would most commonly set up effects on an aux track. However, I did notice that the Logic Stock Reverb plugins default the dry signal to off, but the wet signal to 50% on Chromaverb, negative 10 dBs on Space Designer, and negative 6 dBs on QRS. Not really sure why. Is this the true equivalent of 100% wet, 0% dry on these plugins, or is it just a quirk? I don't really know. If you have any insight, drop a comment below and let me know. I'm super curious. Also note that this only works for stock Logic Pro plugins. Third party plugins still do whatever they used to do. So this isn't a perfect update, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. A small but meaningful update is that when you create a track stack, keyboard shortcut command shift D, you can now use the up and down arrows on your keyboard to switch between folder stack and summing stack. I really like this one because I almost always use summing stacks and now it'll have to move my hand to the mouse to select it every time. It's the little things in life, you know? Another small but meaningful change is that now the loop on and off key command, that is the letter L on the keyboard, no longer changes the region defaults when it is hit without a region selected. What the heck is all that about? So have you ever recorded a new MIDI part and then had it randomly just loop itself for the rest of the song like this? That is probably because you accidentally hit the L key without a region selected. In older versions of Logic Pro, this would change the region defaults. You can see them here in the region inspector when no regions are selected. Anything set here in the defaults will apply to any new region that's added to the project. So if loop was ticked on by accident, every new MIDI region would automatically loop for the length of the project. Thankfully, this has been fixed and now the L shortcut only works when a region is selected. However, if you do find your regions behaving strangely in any way, check to see if the region defaults in the region inspector have gotten changed. And one final interesting one is that now in the bounce a project window, the sample rate of the bounced file is labeled with KHZ instead of written out as thousands of Hertz. So it now says 48 KHZ instead of 48,000. I think this is a great change as it's the way we all talk about sample rate, right? As kilohertz. It can be super confusing if you've never thought about your sample rate being expressed in thousands of hertz instead of kilohertz. Just goes to show that Apple is actively trying to improve Logic Pro in ways both big and small to make it a more reliable and robust platform for all audio workflows. Of course, I only went over a handful of the updates to this new version of Logic Pro. If you wanna check out the full list, and trust me, it is a long list, search for Logic Pro release notes in your web browser and find this Apple website that breaks down all of the updates and improvements. 
I hope you enjoyed this look at my favorite new features and changes to Logic Pro in version 11.1. .1. Drop a comment below and let me know what your favorite new feature is. For now, we'll have to keep waiting for the other features on our wish list, like an overhauled piano roll, but I do think the amount of meaningful updates we got just this year to Logic Pro means that more advancements are on the way and that it is a great time to be a Logic Pro user. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you at the studio next time. Thanks.